Hey everyone, it's the Viper here and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some tips and features that might help you improve at the game. It can be anything from the most simple trick to a feature you maybe didn't know about, a small detail about the civilization or technology, pretty much simple and advanced advice. No matter your skill level, I think you can pick up a thing or two and learn something about the game in these videos. So sit back and enjoy. If your villager is carrying any resource, you can drop it off by constructing an economic building. For example, if you carry gold, you can add it to your stockpile by finishing the construction of a mill. The same works for every resource with a mill, mining camp, lumber camp, town center, and even a farm. One of the most useful hotkeys is the idle villager keybind. Keeping your economy running is crucial, so make sure you have this as an efficient hotkey. You can create control groups by selecting a unit, holding control and clicking a number. This will allow you to jump to and take control of your units without having to select them with your mouse. As you enter later stages of the games, natural gold will eventually run out, and you can therefore generate gold with trade cards from a market or trade cogs from the dock. You have to send the unit to an ally market or allied dock. The longer the distance, the more gold is generated, and make sure to research caravan for extra speed on the trade cart. There is never a right or wrong time to start trading, but I would generally recommend you to start trading early in Imperial Age. Economic upgrades are very important. Priority order of economy upgrades are in most cases wood, food, gold and stone. Even the second wood upgrade is often done before any of the gold and stone upgrades, particularly in booming scenarios. Wheelbarrow and handcart are crucial technologies as well, but see the most significant boost in farming efficiency, so you want to have a lot of farms running before it's worth investing into these. If you don't see a timer during the game on the top of the screen, hit F11 and it will show up. The in-game time is about 1.7 times faster than actual time. If you're playing a team game, you can add a star at the beginning of your message to make your message visible to everyone. With a hashtag, the message will only be seen by enemies, and a semicolon will only show it to your allies. If you have military units selected and hold Alt while right-clicking, you will ignore enemy buildings, and that makes it easier to target the unit you're after if it's hidden behind or close to a structure, or maybe on top of a farm. If you want to lure a deer, the same thing works regarding Gaia units. Holding Alt will make you not attack, making it easy to lure a deer with a military unit that would normally attack it on right click. If herdable animals are killed by military units or buildings, they will give you zero food. The killing blow has to be dealt by villagers in order to be able to collect any food. Upon advancing to the feudal age, a scout cavalry will receive two additional line of sight two extra attack and also move faster. Line of sight is also increased by two in the Castle Age and in the Imperial Age as well. Upon reaching the Castle Age, the training time of Eagle Scouts reduces from 60 to 35 seconds. They also gain plus three attack and bonus damage in forms of plus two attack versus cavalry and plus one attack versus camels and ships. Team bonuses also apply to yourself meaning your team bonus can still be very helpful in 1v1 games. Your civilization bonus also applies to the units that are available to you through a team bonus. For example, Imperial Skirmishers will be cheaper for the Byzantines, and Malians Condottiero will have extra pierce armor, and so on. The time it takes for a monk to convert a unit can be 5 to 14 in-game seconds without any resistance bonuses or techs. Some units, such as the Scout Cavalry and Eager Warrior, have extra resistance to conversions, making them more likely to take longer, but there is still a small chance for a quick conversion. Monks are definitely RNG based. Monks have a short delay between when they start converting and when the conversion can first occur. However, they can still switch targets while converting without resetting this timer. In the monastery, you can find two techs that can help versus conversions. Faith increases the average time it takes to convert your units, and Heresy makes the converted units die instead of switching sides to the enemy. In a recent patch, the Sicilian's first crusade technology also has started giving some conversion resistance, equaling to the faith technology in the monastery. Monks can heal farms, 
and fish traps. Yes. Villagers can steal enemy farms, and fishing ships can steal enemy fish traps. The food resets upon the completion of the steal, which is done by simply tasking your villager to the enemy farm or fishing ship to the enemy fish trap. Efficient hotkeys are very important to speed up the game. I pointed out the idle villager hotkey earlier, and you should try your best to make every hotkey as quick and efficient to click as possible. If you have the global queue activated and visible on your screen, you can cancel units or researchers by holding control and left-clicking the icon in the global queue. Repairing a building requires half the original cost of the building to repair from 1 HP to full HP. Town centers, however, require twice their wood cost, amounting to 550 wood. Repairing a town center does not cost stone, but you need to have at least one stone in your stockpile to be able to repair the town center. In fact, the game shows rounded resources, meaning you could have 0.1 stone, C0, and still be able to repair. The organ gun is the only unique unit that requires redemption to be converted. Ballista elephants also count as siege, but do not require redemption. Aztecs, Incas and Mines can train Exolotl Warriors if they have a stable. The unit has the same stats as a Knight, but one cannot research the Blacksmith Armor upgrades for cavalry. Mayans, however, do not have redemption, so the only way they can ever get a stable is by starting with it in, for example, Mega Random or a custom scenario. Infantry can garrison inside ramps, and doing so increases the ramps' speed and attack against buildings. Siege Towers also move faster with infantry garrisoned. Archers and villagers can also garrison inside of these, but do not increase the attack nor the movement speed. Upon building a market you will get the vision of all your allies. In the past there was a research called cartography, but you had to research for allied vision at the cost of 100 food and 100 gold. The war galley technology you can research in the castle age in the dock upgrades not just galleys, but also fire galleys and demolition rafts. Fire ships, demolition ships, cannon galleons, and unique unit ships are located on the second page of the dock. Click the arrow to view them and their upgrades. Khmer villagers can garrison inside their houses, and allied villagers can also garrison inside Khmer houses. However, compared to a town center, castle, or tower, you do not regenerate HP inside a house. That was 30 quick tips and tricks about Age of Empires 2. Hopefully you learned a thing or two that can be applicable to your own game. Make sure to like the video and maybe share it with a friend who could benefit from watching these. And there will be more of them coming to you soon. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.